Good day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. Today is part two of our multi-part series covering rendering. And in this video, we are going to talk about fabric, or more precisely, how to make procedural fabrics inside of cycles and using the note editor. And as you can see here, this is what I mean. We are going to be creating this super sexy, sensual <laughs> velvet shader. And the cool thing about this shader is that it's completely procedural, meaning that there's no external texture files required. It's all done inside of the node editor and um, you can change whatever you like. You can change the patterning, you can change the, um, the color, you can change the highlights and lowlights, you can change the way the sheen works, everything. Um, it is completely procedural, which means as well is that it's super flexible. Now, if you do not want to do every single step along with me in this video, feel free to download the source files for this video on my Patreon. Um, available now today, feel free to check it out and subscribe. Every dollar will go back into creating more content such as this, and it will be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, feel free to like, subscribe on YouTube. Um, that goes a long way as well. So let's jump right into it and get started. All right, in Blender, if you have your asset library available to you, you've built out your asset library or you've downloaded my one, um, we are going to be using that file today for this construction of the uh, material. Um, do not use your scene file that you constructed your um, scene in. So we have two files in this process. We have our asset library, and then we have our still life file. So our still life file is where we've referenced in everything, we've proxied everything in, so we'll create overrides for everything into our file. We've set it all up and everything's laid out nice and um, you know, appealingly. But we also have the asset file where everything is coming from. So we have the asset library. So what I would say is go ahead and open that file because we're going to be working within that today. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hide everything except the fabric or a piece of fabric to do our um, material setup in. So I'm going to go ahead and hide everything except the fabric in the collections. Now I could go ahead technically and just move this one away, but I'm just going to hide one more fabric because um, I don't want to, I don't really need it right now. So I'm going to go with, yeah, I might just go with those two. All right, sweet. So it's going to bring those up or bring them aside. There we go. And um, I'm going to also create a basic light setup. So just make a new collection, call it lights if you don't have one already in there and just create a basic light setup. You could technically add a HDRI as well if you wanted to. Um, that could be easier as well. If you have like a studio HDRI, that'd be great. But I think that should do the trick. Those, those two lights will do enough. Switch over to um, your rendering engine, uh, your rendering view, and just see how bright that light's coming. Oops, sorry. There we go. Might increase the light strength on that. There we go. Something like that would be fine. Enough so you can get some um, idea of shadow and highlight. that will be enough for this. And we want, we want to be using um, cycles in this um, setup as well. So check on cycles. And if you have a GPU, switch over to GPU rendering. That will make it a lot faster and easier to render with. All right. So with that in mind, we are ready to create a new material. Uh, so just click select any one of these two objects. Go to your material slots and then push new. We're going to rename this as MAT material, uh, not material, we're going to call it velvet in this case. And we're ready to go. Now, with this uh, particular material, this fabric material, it comes down to three things. It comes down to uh, one, the bump pattern, so the bump map, so how we get like uh, the the fabric-like effect or ripples in the weave. 
There's the color, so the highlights and the highlights and lowlights of that velvet, how the crushed velvet works. So we want to try and get that working. And then there's also the properties of the material. So when I say the properties, I'm talking about the um, the sheen. So how it makes it, how you can make it look like fabric in terms of the way the light bounces around um, the sheen, the uh, Fresnel and the way that the highlights work. So those, those three things um, that, that matter in this case. All right, so let's go ahead and start with our PBR setup. So quick little rundown of what we're gonna be using the, out of the most of this. It's going to be the, um, the, the color, the uh, normals, and the sheen, and a little bit of the roughness and specular. And that will probably be it when it comes to how we manipulate this particular material. Um, so let's go ahead and start with, I'm gonna start with the bump. So the bump map. So not the colors yet, we'll start with, we'll start from the bottom and work our way up. What we need to do first is to enable a plugin and that plugin is Node Wrangler. It's a lifesaver. If you don't have it installed, not installed, turned on already in Blender, Go ahead and do it right now. Go to preferences, go to add-ons, type in node wrangler and turn that on because it will make your life so much better. It's also going to help us preview our shader at certain points in our node setup. So it's really, really useful. All right, cool. So let's start with our basic setup. What we need to do is go to search, we're gonna start with a texture coordinate. Node. Click that. We're gonna bring that down here. And the um, the thing that's important about this is that it will tell the uh, shader what to use as a source for um, projecting that texture or the, projecting the textures in the um, the, in the, um, the object that we're gonna use. And of course, we're gonna be using the UVs in this case. We have UVs on these two items. I haven't fucked those ones up, so they're, they're good to go. So the next thing to do is to bring in a mapping node. And I could use Node Wrangler to set this up quicker, but um, because we're working with the normals, I just don't, I wanna show you how it all works. And we're gonna hook in the UV into the vector input, all right? And that will tell us, tell the uh, material that um, where to project the, uh, the texture in the future. And we'll be able to scale, move and rotate the texture according to this mapping node. And this becomes really important in a moment. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is create a wave texture. Now check this out. Now this is why it's really important to have Node Wrangler. So we haven't hooked up anything to this material yet, but we are able to uh, preview this texture, what it does by Clicking on your keyboard, control, shift, and clicking on the um, material. And you can see here that we're getting this, well, it's called the wave texture for a reason. It's creating waves of black and white value. Now, when it comes to building up materials, you are basically just working for the most part with black and white values when you need to mix together properties. So black equaling zero and one equaling one, not one, white equaling one, um, you are able to do crazy stuff with just those two colors, black and white. So you can see here that we can play with the scale of that material just by doing that. The other cool thing is that every texture node has their own inputs to play with as well. So we can actually change the scale in here too. I'm gonna to give it a scale of 300 because what I'm doing is I'm going to try and create the um, the weave of the uh, fabric. I'll give it a smaller value just to show you what I'm doing here. And then we'll scale down the, um, the, uh, the patterning in a moment. So we've got our lines there. We're going to duplicate this wave texture. But this time, if we preview this material, we're going to change the direction in the um, from the X to Y. And that's basically going to change it from vertical to horizontal in those bands. Now, this is where it gets really cool 
we can actually mix these two together to create a weed. So if I grab the mix RGB node, we're going to mix these two together. Just like you would in Photoshop, you're basically mixing layers. So if I go ahead and join those two together here, like so, and change the, um, the mix attribute to multiply, just like in Photoshop, and preview this, you can see we're getting this effect. And if we cramp up the, uh, crank up the factor to one, we get this cool uh, cross-hatching effect. Hmm? You can see where I'm going with this. Hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. Now, if we are going to use this as a bump map, we need to uh, strengthen the value here a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, actually, I don't need to worry about that too much. Um, I was going to say you can actually manipulate that. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to um, be able to uh, give you the ability to strengthen or weaken the radiation of that material. See how it's got a little bit of fuzz? If we add a ramp node now, a color ramp, this allows us to tweak the, the intensity of that mix. So if I were to now play with the ramp, you can see that we get this effect. This could be really useful for other things like um, hard surface details, possibly in the future. Or you can go ahead and just really crank in certain details so you get almost like a square-like effect. That's another thing to look out for. So I'm just gonna leave it as a default for now, but just to show you that you can do it, I thought I'd bring it in there. All right, now, what we're going to do now is use this black and white value as a bump map. So I need a bump node. And we're gonna hook this bump node into the normal input. Uh, not in the normal input here, into the height input there. And then we're going to hook in the normal output into the normal here. Now let's have a look and see what this does to our setup here. We're no longer gonna preview the, cut, the texture, we're going to preview the bump straight out of the material. Let's just hook that up and we're getting something like this, which is kind of cool. Now it's not the perfect material for, um, for a weave, but when you pull away, it starts to make sense. So we're not gonna go for the ultra micro details here. We're gonna get an impression of that detail in this setup. Now there's one last thing I want to do, rather than having the material, the bump traveling in the same direction as the, um, the basically the object here, I'm going to give it a bit of rotation. So what we can do is go all the way back to the mapping of this and re rotate the direction of it. So it's almost diagonal to the material. So you get this uh, sort of effect. How cool is that? All right. And then we can also go ahead and scale this down a little bit further to get what we need. So I'm gonna give this a scale of 100 and 100 for now. So it's pretty, pretty fine. We wanna get to be like almost the same scale of real fabric weave. So that's why the scale of 300 would probably be good. So it's really, really detailed. Like this, the details are so small that, that that's why it doesn't really matter that it just kind of looks like little bumps. But you can see the, the, the difference there in the way that's being built out. All right. Now, if you want to add a little bit more natural distortion to things, you could also go into the nodes here. You're not going to really see it too much, but it may make a difference. We're going to go ahead and add some distortion value to these um, these nodes here. Uh, we can, uh, and that would be enough for this, I think, as well. Just a little bit of, see how by adding a little bit of distortion, we're getting a bit of wonkiness in the weave? That gives it a bit more of a natural edge to it. One last thing we're gonna do, with the bump at least, is we're going to create one more wave texture. And this time we're going to need to uh, make another mapping node for this one. This is a bit a bit separate to the other one. So hooking in the UV again, hook in that vector into this one. And we're gonna preview this one. 
we're going to go ahead and create some um, extra detail here. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the bands from X to Y, uh, from Y to X. We're going to give it a scale of 3.5 or so to give it a larger sort of feel to it. We're going to change the distortion to 7. Uh, the detail to 1.5. Not much, not makes much difference. And the phase, we're going to play with the phase. You can check, you can always go ahead and play around with that a little bit. But now, what we're going to do is really crank up the scale of this thing. So we're getting some real crazy distortion in this. So I'm going to give it a scale of 135 to give it this sort of weird directional feeling to it. And what we're going to do at the end is mix this with our other part of the bump. So before we hook it into the bump, we're going to add another mix node here. And we're going to hook up that, that material there. So we get an effect somewhat like this. All right. And with this mix, we're going to just crank it down a little bit to about 0.5. And we're going to change this from multiply to mix, which is like a, yeah, like a mixing of the two. So we get this sort of softer, like weave in certain parts, stronger in other parts. And um, what you end up having with this one is something like this, where you can kind of see the banding of that material. And it looks more and more natural, I guess you could say, with regards to when you pull it out, pull it away from um, the viewport, it looks really cool. All right, and that's it for the bump. Now, what you can do to keep things nice and organized is create a frame node. And this is where we can contain, inverted commas, this group of nodes into this frame, and then you can label it as such in the label tab, bump, and give us a color. So when you go back to this file and you try to figure out what the hell did I do to make this thing possible, you'll know that this part is all about the bump. All right, cool. Now you may find as well that the bump might be a bit too strong for the fabric. You can always go ahead and downscale the strength of that bump to make it more subtle if you need to. Something like this, if you find it a bit more comfortable to look at and you get a softer sort of um, representation of that weave in the thing. So that's how it is by default. And as you bring down the strength, it gets more subtle. So feel free to, um, you know, play with the subtleties. All right. The next stage is to do the color mix. So we're going to create that sort of, uh, that mix between bright and low values to give it that impression of crushed velvet. So what we're going to need this time is yet another mapping node. So we're going to duplicate this map. map oops, sorry. Let's make a new mapping node. and hook up the UV to the vector again. And we're going to create two procedural textures in this card. We're going to create a Musgrave. And we're going to create a noise texture. And this is what the Musgrave looks like uh, when you preview it. Again, control shift, click on the node. This is what the noise texture looks like at this time. So we're going to hook up the vector to both of these. And we're going to give this a scale of 0.5. And again, you can, you can adjust, technically adjust the scale inside both of these textures here. But we're going to give those different values, right? So that's why we scale down here. All right. With um, the Musgrave texture, let's start with that one. We're going to start with a 3D texture and make it a multi-fractal texture. That gives it a different detail there. And we're going to give it a scale of 9. We're going to increase the detail to 11-ish. And the dimension to 0.2. So we get this, this um, I guess, stubbling, almost like a grunge-like material to this thing. We're going to change the dimension to 0.2. That's what we've done before. And the 
like a narity to 2.27. And again, these are just arbitrary numbers that I use for my, my set, setup here. So we're gonna stick with that for now. Um, and then we're gonna go to the noise texture here and play with the scale here. So 15 on this one. Detail is going to be 16. Roughness is going to be 0.6, I think. And distortion, we're going to leave it at zero. Now, with that in mind, we are now going to mix together these two materials using a mix RGB. We're going to hook that into the two colors like so. So these two factors are going to go into there. And we're going to get a mix, basically a mixing of these two details. Now we can mix it in different ways, but in my example, I'm going to go with divide. So basically they're going to divide the two values together to create a new sort of material texture. So if we go down to divide, it works very similar to Photoshop in that regard. It divides the values and we can hook up, it can crank up those factors, that factor to one to get this like stuffling effect of the material. All right. What we can do now is we can actually mix the weave from the bump into this as well. So just to give it a little bit of um, personality, we're going to grab the color ramp from down here in the bump and hook it up to the color here. And we're going to switch it to multiply. So you can actually see the weave in the actual material but we're going to give it a far less uh, greater mix factor. So just bring that down. So now we can actually see some of that deep, that weave inside of that, that texture there, which is really cool. All right. The next step for this color uh, mixing is we're going to add a ramp. Color ramp. And we're going to crush down these values somewhat. So you can see here, we're going to crush down those values like so. And it's up to you how you play with these different ramps, how you want to get that combination going. But I'm going to flip these values from black and white to get a patterning or something like this. So it really depends on what you prefer. So play with those values. And you'll find that you will have to probably play with um, some of these values here as well to get the combination you want. So playing with these uh, multiply divide settings, feel free to give it a uh, play around with the different settings to get a, a patterning that suits you. All right. So any kind of manipulation of this is, is fine. So I kind of like that. That looks kind of cool. We're getting this sort of uh, mixing of detail. And you can see here, the weave is still in there. It looks really cool. All right, so now we're actually ready to mix um, some actual color to this setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a mix RGB. And we're actually gonna hook this into the factor. So remember what I mentioned before about the color value of black and white or the, the shade value of black and white being a factor of zero to one. So white being one and, red and black being zero. We wanna hook up the color here now into the factor input. See how we have a value here of zero to one. We're gonna hook it into the factor there. And now we're gonna choose our colors. So in this case, we can go with a deep red if you want to. So one will be a highlight and one will be low lights, dark reds. So we can get something like this going on. And it's up to you what colors you go for. I'm just going with red in this case. Now you may find that if the color's looking a bit dull, that's because of the way that uh, Cycles is, uh, well, Blender has its default color space. So you may want to increase the contrast in the viewport to get a, I guess, a more accurate representation of how it would look like once you do some post-production. So if we go to the render settings here, go down to the color management, keep it into, keep it filmic, 
If we just go up to like medium contrast, medium high contrast, you'll see the colors get a bit deeper. So that's really useful to, to know. And you'll see here, now we have the mix, we can actually see, figure out, okay, maybe we can play with these different factors here in these ramps and get the sort of mixing that I like. So just play with those factors. Play with those mixing, with the mixing of those details. And yeah, just, just have fun with it. All right. Last but not least, at least in this at this point in the video, uh, we're going to hook in the mix factor, this color, into the base color of our setup here in the principal shader. And if we preview that, right now we have something like this. And you can see here, we're still seeing that weave in there. We still got that mixing of the colors. Um, so now it's really about um, playing with the material settings of this setup in the PBR shader. So what we're gonna do is first thing, we're gonna increase the sheen. So the sheen of the material is that detail where you get that fuzziness in the material. And that's actually an attribute inside of the principal shader. So if we crank up the sheen, you should start to see some detail of that come through. So if we just go increase the sheen, you can see a little bit on the edges there. It's really subtle. So you may need to actually crank it up to like 15. And this is where you start to see that sort of nice soft fabric like material come through with that sheen value. Now sheen tint is important. So it actually inherits the color from that material hook it up to one and you start to see some of that come through. Now already that's already looking really cool. The next step is to hook up the specular. I'm gonna crank up the specular a little bit. And again, the specular tint, we're gonna hook that up as well. Give that a rich color of that, um, that material, the color it's inherited. And we're starting to get that feeling of velvet come through pretty quickly. All right, with the roughness, we're going to hook up the roughness somewhat to a higher level. So maybe around 0.8. Looking pretty snazzy. And this is a nice little feature that I think a lot of other videos have overlooked. And unfortunately, while this setup is good for um, Cycles and Eevee, this is one part where Eevee doesn't support yet. And that is anisotropic but I'm gonna hook it up anyway, hook it up to a value of one, and that will actually rotate the way that things reflect. You can see it there. See this detail there? Bring it down, you don't see that, that change in the material. Crank it up, you start to see that sort of almost semi-metallic feeling to the setup. And then we're gonna hook up the rotation to one as well. We're gonna hook it up, we're gonna give it a bit of rotation in that as well. Not one, just around, yeah, make it around horizontal-ish. There we go. All right, so you might be thinking, we're done. Looking pretty good so far, but let's let's hold off on calling it done just yet. Let's uh, pip this out a little bit further. So what I want to do is I want to add a little bit more, I guess, uh, pizzazz to the way that the, the light's reflecting off the edge here. And um, we can do that with a Fresnel. So a Fresnel is basically um, the way that light reflects once you reach the edges of any given surface. So the closer to the edge, the more reflective an object becomes. So, um, and this is in nature throughout. So plastics, um, uh, materials, fabrics, everything has Fresnel skin. So I'll like to add a little bit of that to give it a bit more, even more fabric-like nature. It gives it that sort of silkiness to it. So what we're gonna do is add a Fresnel, Fresnel node. And just to show you what that looks like, it kind of gives you that sort of, that reflectiveness according to the angle which you're viewing. And this is one of the most, this is one of those nodes that I use all the time. And this is one of those things I use, especially for tune shading. So if you're into tune shading, um, consider using the Fresnel in certain parts. All right. So what we're going to do is grab 
a um, another mix note. And I want to mix the um, Fresnel with the uh, the pattern here. I know it's weird, but it will make sense once you see it in action. So I'm going to mix it with that and switch it to overlay. And what we get is this sort of feeling of um, of sort of like the material blending, but also getting that sort of, it's like a fake sheen almost. And we're going to use that as a factor in, in mixing another color. So uh, in this case, we have our color here, but now what I want to do is grab a lighter color. So another RGB. Mix RGB. I'm gonna hook up this one now to the bottom. I'm gonna make this color, oh no, I'm gonna just come up to the top. I'm gonna make this color uh, uh, like a light pink baby or something like that. And it can be any color really, but I'm gonna go with a light, lightish pink. Like so. Then I'll hook up this, uh, this one into the factor. So the, this black and white output is now going to be the factor that determines the mix of the Fresnel. What we get is something like this, and you can start to see that sheen. Compared to this one, that sheeniness from the uh, Fresnel doing its magic. Now, when we compile it, when we put this into the material itself, we get something kind of special. It's sort of like the combination of the sheen plus the Fresnel just makes it like pop more. And it, when, like, when you bring the angle down, it actually has this reflectivity. It looks really nice and I really like that. Um, I think it's super cool. All right. Now there's one last color that I wanna to add to this thing. And that is some ambient occlusion. So some ambient occlusion inside the little nooks and crannies. So a darker color this time. So, um, I'm gonna add an ambient occlusion note. And just to show you what that looks like, it's sort of the opposite. It's sort of like getting color inside the insides of this thing. So as an example, I'm gonna grab a ramp just to show you what that looks like, color ramp. And if I crank that down, you start to see these like darker details. Um, and if you cook that in a little bit, we're just gonna get a little bit of that going on in this regard. All right, I'm gonna bring this down to a grayer value. So a value of gray is just means it's less than one or less than zero. All right. And then we're gonna hook it up to a darker color. So I'm gonna make another mix node. In this case, it's just a standard mix shader. Make the, in this case, it's the bottom, the top color here is going to be a dark, dark red. All right, I'm gonna hook up this ramp into the factor and this mix node into this mix node output into this mix node here. And what we'll get is a darkening in certain spots. So as you can see here before and after, we're getting some fake, almost fake shadow going on in there. And we can adjust that accordingly. So if you want it more intense or less intense, you can. But in our case, I think a little bit of uh, softness will go a long way there. Hooking that into the output or input of the principal shader, we now have something like this and it's starting to come up really good. I think that looks awesome so far. And the nice thing about this is because it's completely procedural, we can change the colors as we see fit. So if you need a green shader or a blue or purple, you can go ahead and just change those and not have to worry about it. All right, so that I think is done in terms of the color. Now there's one little thing I wanna to do to this, um, and that is adjust the sheen a little bit by using our um, original mix shader. So this here, I wanna make the sheen be um, uneven across the, um, the material. So what I'm gonna do is, let's just move all this up. Like so. I'm gonna grab this output here, all right? 
and we're gonna make one more um, one more material one more uh, ramp here so I'm gonna make a color ramp here and I'm gonna have it gray values as well just have it gray values so when we look at when you look at the values here it's not gonna be 0 to 1 it's gonna be 0 to like 0.5 so something along those lines so fairly fairly soft and we're gonna hook this into the sheen. That will give us some unevenness in the sheen, here, which gives us, you can see the difference, it's very subtle, but that's how it is. Now, I wanna increase that sheen. And the unfortunate thing is because I've hooked in the sheen between, uh, with this ramp, it's brought the value down back to one in the white value. So we need to actually multiply that value of one by a factor. So in this case, I'm going to add a math node and hook it into that value there. I'm going to say, change that value to a multiply. So I want to multiply that value of one by a factor of say 15 or 20 to bring back some of that sheen. And you can see the sheen works in some parts and other parts the sheen isn't as strong. Um, that's why I like this little, oops, sorry, little mistake there. That's why I like this, uh, the way this thing works so well. So I'm going to just give it a light gray. So the sheen will work in some parts better than others. So you get this like unevenness in the sheen, which is really cool. All right. That is pretty much it when it comes to the shader. But there's one last thing I want to do to the patterning here. And I want to give it a little bit of, um, as, if, as if to say like, you can see the patterning of the material. So in order to do that, we need to mix some more black and white um, patterns. So I'm, I'm gonna go with uh, two new wave textures. So I'm gonna have a similar pattern to these two, but larger, and I'm gonna combine it with this cloud grunge texture, okay? So I'm gonna grab these two. I'm gonna duplicate, oh, I don't wanna duplicate that. I'm gonna just make a new wave texture. And I'm gonna hook up the, um, hook that up to another mapping node. Into the vector. Hook that up to this one. And I'm gonna keep it fairly loose, like in terms of like the size of that texture. So I'm just gonna bring the scale down a little bit. And in this case, we are going to um, add a tiny bit of distortion, so five. Like a little, oh, maybe even less, maybe three. Um, I'm gonna add some phase offset. Don't really need to worry too much about the phase offset, that's fine. And then I'm gonna duplicate this once more, but this time it's gonna be on the Y. Let's have a look at that one. That's how that one looks at the moment. All right. And then what we're gonna do here is we're going to do another mix. Mix shader. Oh, not mix shader, mix RGB. And similar to what we did before, I'm gonna give it a multiply factor. And that's how that looks at the moment. Something like that, all right? And uh, what I wanna do here is I'm gonna fuck with the scale a little bit and give it some like weird unevenness there. Just a little bit. So we get that going on. All right, so we get this weird patterning going on. But now what we're gonna do is combine this patterning with this patterning, all right? So yeah, it starts to get a bit complicated with all these nodes, but um, once you get your head around it, it's really powerful. So grabbing these two, move that divide there. And also this one, actually you might combine it after this one. So after this one, I'm gonna combine it with this one. So one more mix RGB. All right. So in this case, we're gonna mix the pattern at the top with this pattern at the bottom. So what we get is this effect. 
and we're going to add it to set it to multiply and just play with the factor a little bit now uh, in this case we could probably get away with just a mix in this case so something like this to sort of see that sort of patterning take place all right finally we're going to chuck that into this factor here the original mix the color mix and what we'll have is something like this where it's all kind of ramped down and grungy now let's see what the final result is that we start to see this nice uneven like you can see the patterning of like the manufacturing of that velvet maybe or it's like a bit more worn so we can actually play with the scale a little bit make it a little bit larger I might make that a little bit larger there make this one a little bit larger here and just play with those factors to get that sort of subtle patterning in there so you can see what I mean so again let's shoot that back to Mac to mix and the way you mix them together it all comes it all depends it just depends on what you how you mix them so just playing with like even just playing with different material overlays you can see how it reacts with that mix i'm just going to go with a standard mix for now in this case it was just mix and just play with the, the proportion how you want that to come to if you want it to be really subtle that's fine and if we hook that in we got ourselves a really nifty looking shader and i think that looks really cool now you can go and take this to the next level even further if you wanted to by mixing let me just show you what i mean mixing this final ramp in with your bump a little bit and get some interesting like texture into into the um the height of that that the um um the height of this uh material so if i go and add another mix here in between grab the color here hook it into the um the bottom there you can actually try and see about mixing the um the bump see how we can mix the bump now between everything and what you end up getting is a variation in height within the actual material itself Finally, all you need to do to make it feel classy is give it the right lighting. But that's the material there. So as, as a reiteration, we have, uh, we can actually frame everything up. So frame, we're gonna frame up these ones. So this would be the cross hatch. I'm just going to call it material cross hatch, give that a color. Let's give that another color. Yeah, this one. This one is the, um, all this here. I know it's a me it looks really messy, but trust me, it all, it's all, it's all next logic. We're going to make another frame here. And this one could be velvet color, velvet mix or velvet color mix. And this is where all that goes into play. You can put all those in there. Give that a color. And there we go. Color mix. And there we have it. Um, we have our material. And you can see just how cool it looks. Like you get a little bit of height in there. You can see the difference. There's enough detail in there to get some really interesting mixes there. And uh, yeah, it's really it's a really fun little experiment to do with um, with uh, procedural materials. Not a single, not a single um, 
uh, texture involved in this entire setup. And you can always go ahead and change the color. So for instance, if I want to go ahead and change the color, I can give it a deep purple. Obviously being mindful of those colors. Just note that the reason why it's looking a bit pink there is because of this overlay with the Fresnel. So always make sure that you, you're changing all the tones of your material to get what you need. Now, the reason why we did it in the asset library now is that if we go ahead and open this file up inside of our scene setup, it will inherit this material. So let's go ahead and um, firstly copy this material to our little material there. I'm going to copy that down there. Boom. And you can see it's doing its magic down there as well. Looks, looking pretty slick. You can also give this another color as well. Um, we can also bring it into the other tablecloth as well. There we go. I'm going to close that out. There's our material. Now, if we go ahead and open up our file, so our still life, and turn on rendering, it's inherited the material. How cool is that? And if we go ahead and render that, it's gonna look pretty slick. But yeah, the really cool thing about this material is just how you know you can retain some of those details inside of um, inside of the setup. The other cool thing, of course, is how it um, reflects the light, like like fabric on the sides. There it looks really soft and like fabricy. And of course, this is the other advantage here, is that if you go ahead and save that file, go back to the asset library, and you don't like the color, and you have multiple uses of this material, you can go ahead and just change the color. So in this case, I'm going to give it back bring back that deep red. So I want to have a classy, classic look to my uh, material. Again, making sure that the, uh, the colors are all in line with one another. ourselves a nice looking material and of course if you don't like the scale of all this you can always go ahead and change the scale of these things by using the um, the mapping nodes so you can scale these up make it more um, more or less detailed so in this case I'm gonna go point two maybe on those I can change the detail on that that patterning there so maybe I'll um, increase that overall or decrease that scale on these nodes here. Make it more uneven like that. That looks pretty sick. Yeah, I'm liking that. That looks cool. And uh, yeah, you can change the contrast of how things work. So you can make it more or less contrasty. So if you want to have it more like more stupple, you can go ahead and change that material, the balance of those materials, depending on the age of that that cloth maybe you can change that that um that stuffle and you can also go ahead and change the intensity of certain things like ambient occlusion that's the magic of this setup i think um, i think it's really fun to try out and and build something like this on your own and of course you can change the bump you can do all that sort of shit too but that's it and now if i save that file i only change the material go back to my still life without touching anything in my still life file. We got ourselves a brand new red classy material. And we're going to let that do its thing. So yeah. So yeah, that's my go-to uh, method for creating a dynamic velvet texture or material. Now, there is one advantage with this versus um, 
using the Velvet input. Now you may be wondering, Blender has a Velvet input. Um, why aren't we using that? Well, the reason is, is that it doesn't work in Eevee. So if we want to make it work in Eevee, um, this is the method to make it all work together. So if I switch over to Eevee, it will compile that texture and that material. And um, like magic, it should work. So there it goes, just going to um, compile that. And you can see it works just as well in Eevee, minus the anisotropy um, that it does inside of um, Cycles. So there is some advantages there as well. It does look pretty nice inside of Cycles, uh, Eevee as well. Plenty of detail in there as well. But yeah, that's the go-to method. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And this file will be available on my Patreon if you sign up um, over there. Um, if you want the working files, they'll be all packaged up as a neat little zip file. Anyway, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. And again, thank you for watching. Um, all I'm gonna say now is catches and have fun. Cheers.